Hi, and welcome to a new lesson from Easy Chemistry. This is Mr. Kusai, and today we're going to study a new lesson. It's about the molecular orbital theory. Uh, today we're going to uh, focus on the energy levels of bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals. Our objective for today is to define the molecular orbital theory and the molecular orbitals. Uh, we need to differentiate between sigma bond and pi bond. Uh, compare the bonding and the antibonding orbitals. Write the energy levels of bonding and antibonding molecular orbitals in the hydrogen molecule and some homonuclear molecules or atoms. Um, uh, this lesson today is going to focus on the theory itself, some rules, some principles. And uh, in part two of this lesson, we're going to focus on the problem solving. So uh, we need to focus a lot about these rules because without these rules, we would not be able to answer the questions. Um, what is the molecular orbital theory? It uses linear combination of atomic orbitals and we give the uh, abbreviation for it LCAO, linear combination of atomic orbitals to represent molecular orbitals that result from bonds between the atoms. Each atom tends to combine together and form molecular orbitals. So we need to understand what the molecular orbitals now and what is the linear combination of the atomic orbitals. But first, let's focus on the bonding and the antibonding molecular orbitals. The bonding molecular orbital has lower energy and a greater stability than the atomic orbitals from which it was formed. And always the bonding orbital, it, we give it the letter sigma or pi. It depends on what is the atomic orbital or the original atomic orbital was. The, uh, the anti-bonding molecular orbital, uh, it has higher energy and lower stability than the atomic orbitals from the original atoms. And also we give it the letter sigma star or pi star. That means we have sigma and pi for the bonding molecular orbital, sigma star, pi star for the antibonding molecular orbital. We have some rules for the uh, molecular orbitals when we do the configurations. So the molecular orbital configurations, the number of the molecular orbitals formed they always equal to the number of the atomic orbitals combined from the original atoms. Number two, the more stable the bonding molecular orbital, the less stable the corresponding antimolecular orbital. Number three, the filling of the molecular orbitals proceeds from the low to high energies. So this is the off bow principle. Also, it's implemented in the molecular orbitals. Each molecular orbital can accommodate up to two electrons. And this is the Pauli exclusion principle. And also we use Hunt's rule when, we, uh, when adding electrons to the molecular orbitals of the same energy. So this is Hunt's rule. And I recommend you guys to go back to the electron configuration to revise the uh, off power principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and the Hunt's rule. So we follow the off power principle in the molecular orbitals. We follow the Pauli exclusion principle in the molecular orbitals and also the Hunt's rule. Number six, the number of electrons in the molecular orbitals are equal or the number they are equal the numbers of electrons in the molecular orbitals is equal to the sum of all electrons on the bonding atoms or the valence bonding atoms, the valence electrons. Before we start, we need to check uh, this, the sigma and the pi bonds. What is meant here by the sigma for the bonding orbitals, the sigma and pi? and therefore the sigma star and the pi star. What is the difference, the difference between sigma bonding and pi bonding? Look here, this is the p, and we have in p orbital, or p sublevel, we have three orbitals. We usually have 
px, py, and pz. Now, these are the axes for p, where the electrons are actually are. So here, for example, in x, we have electron. In z, we have electron. And in y, we have electron. This is for atom number one, and this is for atom number two. Always, when we start the bonding between two atoms, they start between x and x. So basically, if I have one electron here and one electron here, the bonding will become between x and x. And that is the single bond. And we call this bonding when it's x to x or head to head, as you can see, we call it sigma bond. So sigma bond is a single bond and it occurs first, it happens first, it's created first, and it's head to head interference, like Px to Px. Now, also we have in Y, we have one electron here. And here in the other Y also we have another electron. So the second bonding is going to be between Y and Y or Py to another Py. And as you can see, the Y axis with the other Y axis from the second atom, they are parallel. So it's going to be side to side, unlike the X. It's not head to head anymore. It's side to side. And this is the pi bond when it's side to side bonding, not head to head bonding. So the double bond, it always consists from a single bond or sigma bond, which is the first bonding between the two atoms, X and X. And then we have the second bond of the double bond is going to be a pi bond because it's going to be a side to side interference, which is from PY to PY. The third electron is going to be in Z. So the bonding between Z and Z is also parallel axis to a parallel axis. So it's going to be a side to side interference like PZ to PZ and is going to be another pi bond. So if we have a single bond, it's going to be sigma. If we have a double bond, then it's going to be sigma and one pi. If you have a triple bond, it's going to be sigma and two pi bonds. Let's have this example quickly about the sigma and the pi. Here, for example, if we are talking only about the bond between carbon carbon, you can see that it's a single bond, so it's going to be only a sigma bond. Here in the ethane, we have C2H4, so we have double bond between the carbons. So this one, the first one, is going to be sigma because it's X to X. And the second one is going to be a pi bond because it's Y to Y, side to side. Here in the ethane, we have the first bond is a sigma bond. The second bond in the double bond is going to be the pi bond. And the third bond in the triple bond is going to be another pi bond. That means here we have here one sigma and two pi. Here we have one sigma and two uh, uh, and one pi. And here we have only one sigma and zero pi. This is the difference between the sigma and pi bonds. Why are we studying this? Because we need to understand what is the molecular orbitals are. Also, before we start the molecular orbitals, we need to focus on the constructive and the destructive interference. From physics, you studied that when two waves, they have the exact same energy or amplitude when they have the crest is identical to the second crest, as you can see, not now, as you can see in two, one, now. They are identical, as you can see. So it's going to be a constructive interference. And when we have constructive interference, we call it the bonding. Molecular orbital. But when we have it like this, just like that, the crest is up here. And then another crest is down. 
So it's going to be the destructive interference, as you can see. And the resulting wave is going to be just like this. It's going to be just like this. All right. So we have two types of the interference between the two electrons. Bonding, when the waves, the crests and the trough are the same. And when they are opposite, as you can see, we have the destructive interference. And this is the anti-bonding. Sorry. Anti-bonding molecular orbital. So the bonding is going to be the constructive interference between the two electrons. The anti-bonding is going to be the destructive interference. Now, to understand it, we're going to start with the energy levels of bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals in hydrogen atom. As you can see, the energy levels of the bonding and anti-bonding molecular orbitals in the hydrogen. And we know that the hydrogen, it has only one electron, and the electron configuration is going to be 1s1. That means the atomic orbital for the first hydrogen atom, it has only one electron in 1s. And the other hydrogen atom, it has also one electron in 1s. So this is an example about 2s orbitals. Let's check. This is the first hydrogen atom and the second hydrogen atom. When the interference between the electrons or the valence electrons is constructive, or we call it constructive overlap between them, then there is the sigma bonding between hydrogen and hydrogen. And look here, this is the electron density. As you can see, it's between the two atoms. But when we have the destructive overlap between the hydrogen and the other hydrogen atom, as you can see here, there is no electron density in between the two atoms. As you can see, we have something called the nodal plane. This nodal plane, it doesn't have any electron in between the atoms. And that's why we give it the letter sigma star. That means anti-bonding uh, molecular orbital. So two electrons from the two hydrogen atoms must have opposite spins. And when the constructive interference occurs, the bonding sigma orbital forms and uh, a lower at a lower energy. Of course, the bonding has lower energy as we saw. And when the destructive interference occurs, an anti-bonding sigma orbital forms at higher energy. Let's understand it better now. This is the first uh, atom, which is the hydrogen atom. And we have only one electron in 1s. And this is the second hydrogen atom. And we have only one electron in 1s. Why did, I wrote it? Why did I write it the opposite spin? Because the two electrons from the hydrogen atoms, they must have opposite spins. Now, how can we uh, put the electrons in the bonding and the anti-bonding? According to Aufbau rule that we read here, the filling of uh, the molecular orbitals proceeds from low to high in energies and the bonding molecular orbital it has lower energy and greater stability so the bonding molecular orbital is always below the atomic orbitals and the anti-bonding molecular orbital which has higher energy and lower stability is going to be above the atomic orbitals so let's check here this is the bonding molecular orbital. And it has lower energy than the atomic orbitals and more stability, higher stability. And this one here, 
is the antibonding molecular orbital which has higher energy than the atomic orbitals and therefore higher energy than the bonding when we have the destructive interference the antibonding sigma molecular orbital sigma star 1s so as you can see this is the nodal plane no electron density between the two atoms and when the constructive interference as you can see here then this is the constructive then the electron density is going to be here as you can see in between the two atoms now how can we arrange the electrons or uh, do the electron configuration in the molecular orbitals we're going to start with the lower energy we put one up and one down according to Hans rule which says that when you do the electron configuration we do it single 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 with the same spin and then you double it here we have only one orbital in s so i'm going to put the two electrons because the capacity of the the orbital 1s is two electrons it's very simple now now we understand all those rules that we read in this example what if we have now two p orbitals the possible interaction between two equivalent p orbitals we have two cases because as you remember here we have in p we have px py and pz always we start with the px so that is sigma when we do the bonding and those two are pi when we do the bonding between because they are side to side interference but the px is head to head interference so let's apply on the 2p orbitals if you have in 2px you have one electron up and one electron down in the second atom that means we can write the two electrons in the sigma 2px and this is the constructive interference as you can see the electron density is between the two orbitals or the two atoms this is the bonding sigma of 2p and when the uh, interference is destructive interference that is the antibonding and you have here the nodal plane there is no uh, electron density between the atoms these are the electron densities that's why we call it antibonding it doesn't allow for the bonding now we put here the two electrons leaving the antibonding no electrons in it in p but when we have now py or pz that is pi because it's going to be um side to side so for the 2py or 2pz it's going to be pi 2p and anti pi 2p or pi star 2p the antibonding now we put one electron from the first 2px uh, 2py and the second electron from the second atom 2py as you can see here when we have the uh, constructive interference this is the electron density and because it's a pi bond as we studied before it's going to be up and down the bond and because here is the destructive interference occurring that means the antibonding pi which is pi star for the 2p molecular orbital is going to be in this shape for the x and for the y and there is the nodal plane uh, that was uh, an introduction to the uh, antibonding and the bonding orbitals i hope you guys learned something new today our next video is going to be very very important because we're going to uh, start solving some problems to get better understanding how we implement uh, those rules i hope you guys learned something new today if you have any question write it in the uh, comments i will read all the comments and i will answer the questions have a nice day bye bye